This is Nick with logosbynick.com and in today's tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can design this vector fingerprint logo using Inkscape. And this design was originally created by a channel named Illustrator Designs which I will have linked in the description of the video in order to give them credit. So if you'd like to know how this was done with Illustrator originally go ahead and check out that video. I thought it would be pretty cool to show how this can be done using Inkscape as well. So we'll go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do here in Inkscape is set up our page so that we're all working with a similar view. By the way, if you'd like to know how you can make Inkscape appear dark and with these custom icons, I'll have a link to that information in the description of the video. So what I'm going to do is go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to set the display units to PX for pixels. I'm going to turn off the box that says Page Border and then close out of that. And what I want to do up here is I want to turn on the Snap to Cusp nodes and I want to turn on the Snap to Smooth nodes as well. And then we'll open up the uh, Align and Distribute menu with this button over here. We're going to want Last Selected Chosen from that dropdown. And then we'll open up the Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke menu with that button right there. And then we'll go to View. We're going to want Custom Selected. And then we'll zoom in at 1 to 1. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a grid on the screen. So I'm going to go to View. And where it says Page Grid, go ahead and turn that on. And you're going to notice all these little blue lines appear on the page. And I would I like these lines to be a little further spaced apart. I mean, the, the box is in between those lines to be larger. So to do that, I'll go back to File, Document Properties. And I want to change the, uh, come over here where it says Grids. And where it says Spacing X and Spacing Y. Let's change that to, uh, let's see, 50 and see how that looks. Let's do 50 for each one. That's pretty good. I'll leave that there at 50. Go ahead and close out of that. And what I want to do now is grab the circles and ellipses tool and I want to click and drag on, on over, uh, I want to actually snap the cursor onto one of these intersecting grid lines and then just hold click and drag to create an ellipse and hold control and shift so the ellipse gets created uh, going from the center of the object like that. And I'm going to leave that right there. I want to turn off the fill color by clicking on the X down here and I want to give that a black outline by holding shift and clicking the color black. And I want to take the size of that black outline. I'm going to go to Stroke Style. And I want to change this. I want to make this a lot thicker. I'm going to go with something maybe like 50. Maybe even a little thicker. I'll go with uh, 60. This will vary for you depending on your screen resolution. So uh, just try to eyeball what, what I'm doing here on my screen and get something of a similar size. If you're working with a 1920 by 1080 resolution, then this same number should work just as well. So. I think for 60, this looks pretty good right here. So I'm going to go to the Select tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and delete that now. Because we just needed to create that as a, uh, to, set, to set our preferences for when we create what we create next. And what I'll do, I'll, I'll go back to the Circles and Ellipses tool. And I'll just snap onto one of those intersecting guides. Hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create an ellipse going out maybe this far. Now maybe a little farther, something like that. And it's going to snap to the, it's going to snap to the bounding box. So uh, maybe something that big with those four boxes of space going on the inside there. And one thing I'd like to point out. Let me go back to the uh, select tool up here where it says when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion. We're going to want that turned off for this tutorial. And once we've done that, we can go back to the uh, the circle tool. And I'm going to draw another one of these circles, but one step bigger. So I'm going to snap the cursor onto the center point here. Hold Control and Shift, and then just click and drag to create another circle about that far away. And it, it will snap onto the guideline in order for it to be uh, the, uh, the right amount of spacing. We're going to do this three more times so that we have five circles like this. Oops. So I'll go ahead and create another one. Hold Control and Shift and click and drag from the center point and bring it down here until it snaps like that. I'm going to zoom out a little bit by holding Control and rolling down the mouse wheel. Create another one. And then one more. So snap to there, hold control and shift. And after that, we should have one, two, three, four, five. Five different circles that are all the same stroke width and are all equally spaced apart, uh, spaced apart like that. And what I'm going to do now is I'll grab the select tool. I'm going to click and drag over all of those. And I'm going to bring the opacity down about in half. And I'll go to path, object to path. And then I'll go to path. Combine. And once we've done that, I'm going to grab the uh, squares and rectangles tool. And I'm going to snap over here to the halfway point between the two circles. The cursor should snap automatically. 
and then just click and drag to create a rectangle going through the outside of that like that. And we want this to be much wider than the rest of the circle, something like that right there. And just to clear up any uh, inconsistencies between the fill and the stroke, I'm going to turn the fill red and I'm going to turn off the stroke by holding shift and clicking on the X. And I'm going to grab the select tool and then I'll hold shift and click on our circle right here. And I want to make sure that's centered on the vertical axis by clicking that button right there. Center object on vertical axis. And once we've done that, we can go to Object, no, we can go to Path, Cut Path. And that's going to cut that all up into individual little pieces. And what I'm going to do now is click off of that to deselect everything. And I'm going to click and drag over these bottom segments right here to select them all. And I'm going to bring them, oops, I grabbed the wrong one. I'm going to grab them, actually, you know what, let me go back to that. Just like that. We want to make sure we're grabbing only the bottom ones and none of the top ones as well. So click and drag going over that. Oh, I'm glitching here. There we go. Grab all of them. And I'm going to take this and bring this out here. And in this very last one, I want to take this last end piece here and snap this to the third piece in right here or the center one. So I'll take that and snap that to the center one. Actually, you know what? I have to snap the nodes together like that so that the intersecting area is kind of like a circle. And once we've done that, we can click off of everything, click off of it to deselect everything. And I'm going to go back to the circles and ellipses tool. Uh, we want to, up here we have our uh, fill set to red. So I want to turn that off by clicking on the X. And I want to hold shift and click on the color black to give that a, a stroke. And it should default to the same stroke size we previously used, which was 60. If not, just go over to the stroke style tab and type that in manually. And what I'll do now is I'm going to snap to the center point between the center uh, guide between these two uh, end pieces here and then just click and drag hold control and shift to create a perfectly round circle continuing on going around the outside there and we're going to create these circles to match up to these end points here so we're going to have to create one two three four five six six more in addition to what we just created so I'm going to go ahead and do that again I'm zooming out a little bit Come over here, click and drag, hold control and shift, do it again. We're going to want one going through the center here as well. Go back over here. And we're going to need four more. Click and drag that. One, here goes two. three and four okay so now that we have that set what we want to do is grab the select tool and I'm gonna click and drag over these original pieces right here and I just want to make them a different color just so we can easily distinguish them for the rest from the rest of the graphic I'm gonna hold shift and click on the color red to make them red and I'll just group them together with the group selected objects button for now I'm going to zoom out a little more. What I want to do now is I want to click and drag over everything. Then I want to hold shift and click on the, uh, the red object right there, our red group to deselect that. And with all of these new circles selected, we'll go to object, no, we'll go to path, combine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this red, click on this red object. And I'm going to, wherever it says, uh, actually, you know what, let's go to edit and copy. We want to copy that. And then where it says width and height, we want to turn on the lock icon between the two. And I'm going to grab the circles and ellipses tool and hold, and hold control and shift and click and drag to create a, a perfectly round circle like that. It doesn't matter which size it is or where you place it. Uh, I'll just make this green for now so we can differentiate it. I'm going to hold shift and click on the X to get rid of the, the, uh, the red outline. And I'll go to edit, paste size, paste width. Then I'll go back to the select tool hold shift, click on this red bunch of circles right here. And I want to center it on the vertical axis and then align the top edges and then click off of it to deselect everything. And now what we could do is click on the green circle, hold shift, click on the, uh, the, bunch of, uh, the large bunch of circles here and go to path, cut path. And now we can click off of that to deselect everything. And if you notice, it cut everything going along that circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take these individual pieces and just click and drag them and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. And you know what, we might even be able to go to view and page grid to turn that off for now. We don't need that getting in our way. 
So go ahead, go ahead and do that. Um, okay, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna I'm gonna hold Shift and click on all of the black objects here to to select them all. And with them all selected, I'll go to Path, Combine, and we should have them all selected like that. And once I've done that, I can click off of the graph to deselect everything. I'm gonna go back to the uh, squares and rectangles tool and snap to this these inter this intersecting area right here, and then just click and drag to create a, a big rectangle going through there again, larger than the rest of the graphic, just like last time. Grab the select tool, hold shift, click on the black objects right there and center it up on the vertical axis and then go to path, uh, cut path. Now we can click off of that to deselect everything. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these individual pieces up here and just get rid of them. Just like that. And once we've done that, we're left with this object here in the shape of our logo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag over all of this. And I'm gonna hold shift and click on the uh, the color black here to make this all the same shade. And I wanna click off of that to deselect everything. The only thing left to do now would be to add some breaking points between each line to break it up a little bit like you see that I did in the thumbnail. So uh, what I'll do is I'll click on this line right here. Actually, no, I'll start with this line. We're gonna, we're gonna skip the center line that goes through the center right here. I'm gonna start with this one on the outside. I'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool and I'll double click this line right here to put a new point right beneath this one. And then I'll click on that node to select it. And I wanna click this button up here that says break path at selected node. And what you can do now is just click and drag that and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put a little a little broken line going between each of these uh, each of these lines here. So I'll click on this one, break, uh, break path at selected node, do the same thing over here, break path at selected node. And you might have to click and drag it. Oh, you see it grabbed the wrong one there because it's layered above that one. So let me try this one up here. And once we've done that, you just press delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. And I'll do the same thing. I'll come up here and double click right about here to put a new node in there. Click on that, break path at selected nodes. And we should be able to take that and press delete. Put another one down here. Maybe put this one right here and then up here. Click on that node and then click on this node and do the same thing. And you should pretty much get the idea by now. So I'll just go ahead and go through the graphic and finish this up real quick and I'll catch up with you then. Okay, so once we've done that, we're pretty much set with the graphic here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click and drag. I'll go back to the select tool. I'm gonna click and drag over everything and bring the opacity all the way up. You know, we might have to click the ungroup button a couple of times and then do that again. And then once we've done that, uh, if you scale this thing up or down, it should change the size or the thickness of the lines depending on how big or large you make it. If you'd like to finalize it, at this specific size right here. I'd suggest making a duplicate copy before you do this, just so you have a backup here in case you wanna do something else. Uh, with them all selected, I'll just hit Control D to duplicate that and bring this one over here. And I'll go to Path, Stroke to Path. And that's now all, you can color that in. If you want, you could even group it together and uh, give this a, uh, a gradient like I did in the thumbnail. Give, make that blue. I'll go to the Fill tab, click on the Linear Gradient and go to the uh, gradient tool, which is right here. Keyboard shortcut is G. Click on that node, bring the opacity all the way up and make this a shade of pink like that. I'll bring this out here and bring this in here like that. And that should pretty much do that for this tutorial. That's how you can go about making a vector fingerprint logo using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thanks for watching.